I heard that cave Metrion has another name, the Siren's Cave. Folks say there's a gust that flows through the cave and causes the sounds of people calling to you. I heard it ain't just the wind. Some old settlers, explorers, got stuck down there. Shit got real before they knew it. Boom. They were gone. Maybe they fell into the pit. My two friends, Trey and Anthony, kept on discussing the majesties of this strange cave in the middle of nowhere outside of our town. Some 70 miles north, there was a large swathe of land housing a large cave that held an infamous whaling cave. It was a ways up for adventure. Being 17 and spending most of my time outdoors, but it was the innocence of the, my two aforementioned friends and their prosperity to do far more daring feats that led us to this particular adventure. Come on, Bruce. You know, if we tell our folks, they'll just stomp us. Or worse yet, insist on coming with and providing boring rules we don't need. Trey jabbed my shoulder playfully. We're strong, virile men. We don't need any of that shit. Plus, we're not going to need much more than ropes, lights, backpack, and some basic gear. We'll be in and out with either a boring story or to tell, or footage that will net us those huge YouTube bucks. Yeah, Trey, I know. I rolled my eyes. Imitating his enthusiasm. Alright, I'm in. W what are we doing? Anthony stood up from my bed, hands on his back and looking over the map. He was very much the brains of the operation. Alright, we'll leave 5am tomorrow. Bruce, borrow your sister's car and pick us up. If your mom asks, tell her going hiking or something. Don't say the cave, obviously. If you're super worried about location tracking and your mom not believing you, turn it off. We'll get to the cave before sunrise and be back home by early morning. If anyone asks, we're just doing some bonding in the mountains. Okay. Bonding in the mountains. Won't that make people think? Trace started before Anthony let out an audible sigh. We broke into laughter. Hey, it's cool, bro. No judging here. I mean, I know I'm your type. But my girlfriend may have questions. After some late arguing and insistence by Anthony that wasn't what he meant, we broke open some beers to celebrate the plans in motion and got an early night. When I slept, I envisioned a small opening in the side of a large cliff edge, no bigger than me, and almost as if it was manufactured to my size and stature. I felt my body drawn to it, and even when I tried to resist, my frame was inescapably pulled into the perfectly shaped holes in the wall. A force wrapped around my waist, wrenching me further inside. Slipping into the wall, felt the constructing nature of bedrock push on my muscles, squeezing at my bones and ripping at my flesh as I pushed even further in. I could hear someone, something, calling out to me from the depths. Then... In an instant, my body was wrenched forward at an astounding rate. My skin split open and I felt burning all over as I screamed for the dream to stop. When I awoke, I was laying in a cold sweat and staring down at the bedroom floor, my covers wrapped all around me like boa constrictor. What the fuck was that?
We set about making our preparations in the morning. I felt the cold chill of November air hit my skin as I went downstairs and grabbed my gear from the garage and thanked my sister for the car. Even if it went, bribing her 50 bucks to not tell mom where we going. By the time I picked up the guys and we'd reached the cave, it was nearly 6 a.m. Dawn was still some time away, but it wouldn't be long before the sunlight exposed our early hour assembling. We were pretty confident this place was state property. None of us wanted to get caught by state troopers or police for trespassing. We worked quickly to get our gear and head down to the mouth of the cave. This thing was gigantic, built into the side of a great rocky mountain that stretched across the surrounding plains, connecting at the base to a slew of other jagged giants that rose into the sky and looked as if they'd punctured the very clouds. The cave's depths were unknown to us, but the width of the mouth gave us a decent inkling. Over 70 feet wide and 30 feet high and gave us all the forbidding we needed. Damn, big mouth, huh? Trey remarked trying to find a joke that would fit within his adult juvenile mind. Guess she can take all three of us at once, eh? Nervous laughter filled the awkward silences neither myself nor Anthony wanted to be the first to venture in. We had very little light beyond the first few feet and didn't expect to turn on our headlamps so early. Nevertheless, we ventured forth together and within a few minutes the entrance's warmth gave way to cold indifference inside the cave. The entrance was simple. It jutted down on a slightly steep incline for about five minutes before widening into a fork that split two ways, one going left and up, the other going right and down, pausing for a moment to listen for any distinct sounds. We heard something emanate from the right path, a soft, guttural wailing. You think it's... I began eyeing the passageway with anticipation and concern, Trey rubbing his hands together. Oh hell yeah, I think it's the pit. We ready? Before we even replied, he set off ahead and left, myself and Anthony still faced with the forbidding nature of venturing on. We both knew there was something unseemly. What did you say this cave was called? Siren's Call? I'd not heard that one before. I remarked, carefully trotting forth to catch up with Trey and flinching at every small juttering of the cave's walls. Anthony scoffed and picked up his pace. Clueless in the name, bud. The siren's call was the original moniker locals gave this place. Said it housed something deep in the pit that fed off those with weak wills used the voices of those they loved to entice them in and devour them. Natives said it was an evil spirit and told authorities to seal the cave off. But of course they never did. It became the Wailing Cave some time later to help with tourism. And I can't say I blame them. It sure as hell brought us here. Yeah, illegally, might I add, I remarked, forcing a smile. Still, though, creepy as fuck name. We nodded and turned the final corner into a large opening. The ceiling of the cave, hundreds of feet above us, a pair of tunnels on the other side of the clearing around 200 feet across from us. 
and the censer sat a pit with raised bricks around the opening, the width of it easily a hundred feet. Even coming close to it brought me anxiety, but not as much as seeing Trey securing his line to the side of the pit and giving us a thumbs up as he abseiled down. See you fuckers soon. I'm gonna get us some money. He called as he descended into the darkness. We shook our heads and tried to contain our concerns. Trey was always the daredevil among us. He'd once broken his leg trying to evade law enforcement scaling a large fence and not even thinking about the drop afterwards. But when the line grew taut and the snapping sound bounced around the cave, we knew something was wrong. Trey? Trey? I called out. No response. We ran over and peered down the pit, his lines still attached in absolute darkness after the first ten feet. We held on to the line and tried pulling against it in vain. Worried he'd passed out from hitting his head, a sense of absolute dread filled my body. The longer I stared, Anthony's forehead breaking out in cold sweat as we waited for a response. We got it, in the form of the line snapping and traced terrified screams as he fell further and further down. It was horrific. Visceral sound that sent my knees buckling and Anthony grabbing me to stop my momentum dragging me into the pit with him. We have to go. We have to Get help now, he cried, shaking my shoulders until I saw sense. I nodded, and we dashed for the entrance. What followed chilled my blood and stopped us dead in our tracks. Hey, hey, I'm fine, I'm fine. Just spoke the shit out of me is all. Don't panic, jeez. Just come back and throw me a line. I'll be able to get up. Anthony breathed a sigh of relief and began walking back. But I pulled on his collar and shook my head, eyes wide and full of fear. A finger to my lips. W what? He's stuck down there, dude. We gotta help him. He hissed, keeping his voice slow as I asked. Did you hear his body hit the ground? I asked, his eyes fixated on mine and not responding when I asked. Did you hear his body hit the ground, Anthony? He swallowed, looked over his shoulder and back to me, shaking his head. How deep is that pit? If you were to guess. I pressed him. A transference of nerves between us as we kept quiet. Guys, you still there? I can just about make out your voices. Come and help me, man. We ain't gonna get that sweet YouTube stack with me staying down here. He called, concern and fear, raking his voice. I, I'd, I'd say over 500 feet, if not deeper. He replied, the fear mounting the more he spoke. So, if he did fall with the length of the rope bringing him down, maybe 200 feet, he'd be dead. He didn't use anywhere near enough to scale that far down. So, I let the question linger in the air for a moment as a chill ran through the cave. Was it the breeze the natives mentioned? So what is calling out to us from the pit? He finally intonated, our forbidding growing like cancer as we stared at the pit just 30 feet away. Trey, what is your girlfriend's birthday? I called out, an idea popping to mind. 
Huh? Why? Guys, this ain't 21 questions. Come over and help me. I feel fine. But that may be adrenaline. I need a life out of here. Now come on. He shouted back, Anthony taking another step forward. Answer the question, Trey. We just want to make sure all is fine. You know the legend of this cave as well as we do. How far are you? He called out. The frustration apparent now is in Trey's voice. For fuck's sake. It's sometime in April. I can't remember when, okay? And I'd say I fell maybe 50 feet. It's soft down here. I guess he broke my fall. Happy? Anthony and I exchanged looks as he shook his head, backing away towards me. I hear you walking away, damn it. Anthony, hey, you're the smartest guy I know. So I got a question for you. If you're that worried, I'm not who I say I am. Which, if you'll pardon the expression, is fucking stupid. Who am I? I swear his voice shifted just a tad as he asked the last question. But he didn't stop. You've always been the sort of guy who loved mysteries. Imagine what secrets are down here. What you could know if you s saw what I see. All you have to do is throw me a line. I'll tell you everything. Anthony's eyes were wide. Darting between me and him. I couldn't understand how this was even a difficult choice. It clearly wasn't Trey. Or if it was... He was not someone we could save on our own with our limited equipment. Why was this so hard for him? But seeing that glazed look in his eyes, the slackness of the jaw as he walked over to the pit and through a line, I realized why the cave used to be called the Siren's Call. I'm begging you, Anthony, come with me. We can save Trey within a couple of hours. With the right people, we don't need to put ourselves at risk. I reached out a hand, not willing to get close, but also worried about my friend's slowly deteriorating sanity. He looked at the rope and looked at me, holding out a hand, keeping his dominant one on the line of rope as he th threw it as it fell down and knocked against the inner pit wall. In an instant, it grew out and snapped as Anthony was pulled into the pit headfirst. His screaming filled the cave as and threatened to burst my eardrums with their piercing shrill. I turned away and covered my head until it stopped reverbing. As silence greeted me, I felt my body surge with adrenaline, and all things urged me to go to the entrance. But, as Anthony's calm voice called from the pit, a melee mel ice overcame me. And, while I didn't dare turn around, I suddenly felt it difficult to make any sudden moves. Bruce... You were always a loyal friend. The furniture in the room that tied us together. You were never going to make it outside without us. You know that. I gotta agree with Ant. You're sort of like the yes man but awkward. Full of self-doubt and undesirable traits. Ain't nobody gonna want that complex mess. I felt tears fill my eyes and rush down my cheeks. Something was crawling out of the pit, scaling its walls, with thick digits digging into the rock and grunting as it ascended. I can't join you. I have a life out there. And so do you. So do my friends that you're using to talk right now. 
I clenched my fist, trying to move, but still unable. Why can't you let them go? Why can't you let us all go? Something pulled at the outside of the pit, scratching against the mortar and panting. It sounded large. Its vocal range began to sound like a dog's when imitating human speech. Then how else would we talk to you? We have no voice of our own. We know no other way than to be used as meat puppets. It gurgled and laughed as Anthony spoke, his voice breaking down and distorting. Whatever was behind me was finding its way to me, and the voice grew closer. It was so visceral and real that I almost turned around. Good joke, Trey. After all, we're all meat puppets in the end, so why wait? Besides, hot breath pushed against my ankles. It was so close. You smell ready to us. At that moment, fear gave way to flight. And I bolted for the passage, dropping my backpack on whatever was behind me. It contained several pieces of heavy equipment that I had prepared for my own abseiling and that being unceremoniously brought down on anyone would hurt. That thing howled as my pace picked up. So ready, why wait? So ready, why wait? It bellowed, claws and hot breath tearing into the walls as I rushed, my eyes blurring and body aching as I pushed through the agony. As soon as light filled the opening, the panting stopped, no cry of pain or slinking into the darkness, it simply ceased. I did not dare turn around until I was back at the top of the hill leading to the mouth. When I did, I saw nothing, simply the entrance to a cave none of us should have entered. My friends still trapped inside. The drive home was filled with anxiety, fear and pain. I did the right thing and contacted the state police on my way back. They mounted a search and declared that Anthony and Trey's deaths were entirely by accident. Death by misadventure was the official cause of death. We were called stupid boys looking for a thrill, and the town by a large felt sympathetic to me. Life moved on, and even several years later, still living in that small rocky town, I get looks of sympathy and pity. Poor boy, he still thinks there's something there. Can't accept being the only one, I suppose. They'd say, looking at me as if I were a lost lamb with no idea of where to go or what to do. Even my own family gave me a wide berth, therapy, and support. But I knew better. I still do. The cave has been closed off properly for some time. Nobody's smart enough to venture close since the incident. But that doesn't stop people trying curious to see if the legends of the cave are true the wailing cave the sirens call as a grisly and blood curdling as they heard but at least i hope they'll never learn the truth not long after the incident i had those nightmares again enticing me into my own private little hole in the wall squeezing and constricting me only now, I saw my friends at the end of this increasingly claustrophobic tunnel, calling to me in pain to join them, to help them. I sought out a native man in the area and told him of my story, told him of what happened. He listened, 
and never judged or thought as me as a fool. Instead, his face grew full of sorrow, and he handed me a totem to keep with me. Spirits inhabit that cave, the kind that can never truly rest. They will always wish to pull more in and add to their energy. You were most likely their target from your dreams. The others simply used as bait. Some nights, I don't just awaken in cold sweat from the nightmares. Some nights, I find myself standing at the front of my window, staring in the direction of the cave, now seemingly visible f from so far a distance, beaconing me. When I drive through the mountains for work, I hear them. I hear them so clearly. I hear their voices as clear as I hear my own families calling into my ear. So ready. Why wait? <laughs>